How do non-Western countries perceive the Democratic and Republican parties of the United States? It's a thought-provoking question, isn't it? To fully comprehend this, we must step outside our Western-centric viewpoint. Imagine viewing the world through a different lens, one that might see these two major political parties not as champions of democracy, but as potential state-sponsored corporate terrorist groups. A shocking perspective, isn't it? But stick with us. Let's delve into a comparison that might surprise you. First, let's establish what we mean when we talk about terrorism. The term terrorism is not easy to define, and interpretations can vary depending on who you ask. That said, there's a broadly accepted definition that we'll use as our base. Terrorism in its broadest sense refers to the use of violence or the threat of violence primarily against civilians, with the aim of achieving political, ideological, or religious objectives. Now let's dissect this definition a bit further. The first key characteristic of a terrorist group is the use of violence and intimidation. This is not merely violence for the sake of it, but rather violence that serves a strategic purpose. It's a weapon utilized to create a climate of fear and uncertainty. Next, we have political objectives. These are the goals that the group is striving to achieve. They might be related to gaining control of a territory, changing government policies, or overthrowing an existing political system. Finally, the last characteristic is the instilling of fear. This is often achieved through unpredictable and indiscriminate attacks, which are designed to spread panic and disrupt everyday life. The ultimate goal is to force a change in behavior or policy through fear. Now let's see how this definition might apply to the Democratic and Republican parties. Let's start with the Democratic Party. In the realm of international relations, perception is often reality. And the actions of the Democratic Party have at times been perceived as violent or intimidating by non-Western countries. This isn't to suggest that Democrats as a rule endorse violence but rather to highlight the fact that policy decisions can have unintended and far-reaching consequences. For instance, consider the intervention in Libya in 2011. Under the leadership of President Obama, a Democrat, the United States led a NATO intervention to protect Libyan civilians from the regime of Muammar Gaddafi. However, the aftermath was a power vacuum, leading to ongoing instability, violence, and the rise of extremist groups. For many Libyans and others in non-Western countries, this intervention was a source of fear and harm. Or let's take the use of drone strikes in countries like Pakistan, Yemen, and Somalia. Under democratic administrations, these strikes have been used as a tool to combat terrorism. However, civilian casualties and the constant fear of these unseen weapons have sparked widespread criticism and resentment. Moreover, economic policies can also lead to perceived harm. For instance, the imposition of sanctions, often used as a diplomatic tool, can result in severe hardship for the common people in the targeted nations. Under the Obama administration, sanctions were tightened on Iran, leading to economic crisis and widespread suffering among the Iranian populace. These examples are not meant to single out the Democratic Party, nor to suggest that their intents were malicious. But they do show how the actions of a political party, guided by its own national interests and international obligations, can lead to fear, harm, and resentment in other parts of the world. In this light, it's not hard to see why some might perceive these actions as a form of state-sponsored corporate terrorism. After all, one person's freedom fighter can be another person's terrorist. So, from a certain perspective, these actions might be seen as a form of state-sponsored corporate terrorism. Now, what about the Republican Party? Just as we've explored with the Democrats, there are several instances where the actions of the Republican Party have been met with fear and suspicion in non-Western nations. This is not to say that the party itself is inherently violent, but rather, that their policies and actions can sometimes lead to harmful outcomes. Let's take a look at a few examples. Under the administration of George W. Bush, the United States launched the Iraq War in 2003. This military action, justified under the premise of disarming Iraq of weapons of mass destruction, led to the displacement of millions and the death of hundreds of thousands of Iraqis. The war caused significant destruction and instability in Iraq, and its consequences continue to reverberate today. Moving forward, under the presidency of Donald Trump, the United States withdrew from the Iran nuclear deal, a move that escalated tensions between the two countries. The decision, seen by many as a show of power and intimidation, led to a series of events culminating in the assassination of Iranian General Qasem Soleimani. This act of violence was met with shock and fear in many non-Western countries particularly in the Middle East, 
In the realm of economic policy the use of sanctions as a tool for diplomacy has also been criticized. While sanctions are intended to pressure governments into changing their behavior, they often result in widespread suffering among the civilian population. For instance, the sanctions imposed on North Korea have led to food shortages and economic hardship for ordinary citizens. Each of these examples illustrates actions that, while sanctioned by a government, have resulted in fear, harm, and sometimes, widespread violence. These are actions that, under certain lenses, could be perceived as acts of state-sponsored corporate terrorism. Again, from a certain perspective, these actions might be seen as a form of state-sponsored corporate terrorism. Having looked at the two parties, let's compare their actions to those of recognized terrorist groups. Let's start with the similarities. Recognized terrorist groups like Al-Qaeda or ISIS use violence and fear as tools to achieve political ends. In a similar vein, both the Democratic and Republican parties have been accused of using fear to advance their agenda. This fear can be seen in the form of war rhetoric or scare tactics during election campaigns. Furthermore, both recognized terrorist groups and these two parties have been known to exploit social divisions for their own gain. Whether it's class, race or religion, these entities have used such divisions to rally support and demonize the other. On the other hand, there are significant differences that must be acknowledged. Recognized terrorist groups often employ direct physical violence to achieve their goals. They are not shy about using bombings, shootings or kidnappings to instill fear and chaos. On the contrary, the Democratic and Republican parties, while often employing aggressive rhetoric, do not resort to such direct physical violence. Moreover, recognized terrorist groups operate outside the boundaries of international law, while the Democratic and Republican parties function within a democratic framework. These parties, though often involved in contentious politics in principle, can held accountable by the electorate and the rule of law. While it's important to draw these comparisons, it's equally crucial to remember that the context differs vastly. Recognized terrorist groups operate in areas of conflict and instability, while the Democratic and Republican parties operate in one of the world's oldest democracies. In conclusion, while there are certain similarities between the actions of the Democratic and Republican parties and recognized terrorist groups, there are also key differences. The comparisons we've discussed should not be used to label these parties as corporate terrorist groups, but rather to highlight the complexity of political actions and their consequences. As we can see there are some striking parallels but also key differences. What can we conclude from this comparison? We've journeyed quite a way in this discourse examining how non-Western nations might perceive the Democratic and Republican parties as state-sponsored corporate terrorist groups we've seen that the parallels are not as far-fetched as they might initially seem. Let's circle back to the start, where we defined terrorism. We learned that it's a term that's not confined to non-state actors. It can also apply to actions taken by governments or political parties, particularly when those actions cause indiscriminate harm or are intended to influence or intimidate societies or governments for political, religious, or ideological purposes. We then delved into the actions and consequences of both the Democratic and Republican parties. We highlighted instances where their activities both domestically and internationally have resulted in significant harm or distress to communities. These actions have often been justified in the name of national security or political ideology, but to an outsider looking in, they might appear as acts of terror. Drawing parallels with recognized terrorist groups, we saw that the methods employed by these political parties aren't entirely different. The use of violence or intimidation, the manipulation of public sentiment, and the pursuit of political objectives at the cost of human lives are common threads that bind them. Now, the crux of the matter lies in perspective. While it's unlikely that these parties will ever be officially classified as corporate terrorist groups, this comparison serves to highlight the subjective nature of the term terrorism. It reminds us that one man's freedom fighter can be another man's terrorist, and that our understanding of these terms is often shaped by our own cultural, political, and ideological biases. The implications of this comparison are profound. It invites us to question our preconceived notions and biases, and to view global politics through a broader lens. It challenges us to consider the impact of our actions, not just on our own society but on the world at large. It's clear that our understanding of terrorism might need to be broadened, and that perceptions can vary greatly depending on perspective.
If you enjoyed this video, please like, share and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.